Today I'm gonna to talk about a good, cheap work truck. This is an 81 F100. Even though it says F150, somebody just stuck that on as a laugh. Now when I say cheap, I mean really cheap. The owner just bought this for $2. Yes, $2, and it runs. Now granted, he bought it from his father, who bought it from his grandfather, and the grandfather did pay a whopping $300 for it ages ago. It had been sitting in a field for years, but he got it running and drove it home. Now the reason I say it's a good cheap work truck is under the hood, because under the hood is a 300 cubic inch straight six cylinder Ford engine. Now they're not insane horsepower, they go anywhere from about 100 to 175 horsepower, but they got a lot of low end torque for pulling stuff. So much so that Ford actually put them in dump trucks. You see them in all kinds of things, wood chippers, dump trucks, you name it. Well, this one is an F100 truck that it came with in 1981. And check it out. It's a typical rolling 300 straight six. They got a little roll to them, but they can run for Ever. And everything under here is simplicity itself. A simple old carburetor. A very simple carburetor. There's the fuel filter. And an electric automatic choke. This one works perfectly fine, but if it ever does go out, you can easily rebuild them. Or heck, you can still get them from AutoZone. <laughs> Now let's say you wanted to upgrade the carburetor. For about 280 bucks, you could put a brand new Edelbrock on that. Work much better than the original one. You get more horsepower out of it too. You can do whatever you want with one of these old trucks. And strangely enough, the air conditioner still works on this old thing. And as you can see, pretty much everything is simple. There we have mechanical fuel pump. Bolts on with two bolts. A distributor system, it can easily be repaired. And this is one of my favorites. Don't you hate it with newer cars when, well, your regulator's broken, but that's built into the alternator, so you gotta replace the whole alternator. Well, not in these old things. Here's the alternator, but here's the regulator over here. You can replace just the regulator if you have to. It's a separate piece. As we go inside, we can see it's old. We know that, it's an 81. And what do we have here? There's a bungee cord. Now why is there a bungee cord holding the shifter up? Well, there's a story behind that. It was sitting running in a garage with the trailer on the back. Without the bungee cord, it slipped into reverse gear by itself. As you can see, the bungee cord holds it up, so that won't happen. Because when it had the trailer on the back and it was inside and it slipped in reverse, this is what happened. The trailer jackknifed and smashed it in. But oddly enough, it didn't even break the tail light, so it comes pre-dented. Well, I guess you expect dents for a $2 truck, but check this out. This 81's got the long bed, it just keeps going. You can throw a lot of junk in this baby. And because of that 300 cubic inch straight six, you can actually tow quite a bit. Now, you're not supposed to do this, but of course, for the $2 truck, who would care? I got a friend with one, he towed a 14,000 pound load behind him with this thing. It's not rated for that. And he said, uh, it was better going downhill and I like it when the wind was pushing from the back, <laughs> but the engine has the torque in order to pull that. And as you can see when we look under, the old frame, still solid as can be. They built these things back in the day. You can see it's even got dual exhaust, one on each side, a lot of rigging hair welding stuff on, but hey, it holds up. Now you might think this truck is old, but it's actually the seventh generation of the Ford pickup trucks. And it does have a four speed automatic transmission that's actually quite reliable. And since this is the classic pickup truck, it's not four wheel drive, it's just driving the rear. It's a classic pickup truck with a big old differential in the back. Solid, reliable. But really, when you slam the hood, it's still a pretty sharp looking truck. I do have to say, this is $2 well spent. Or even in his grandfather's day, when he bought it for $300. That's still a pretty good deal. As we go back inside, yeah, it's got an aftermarket radio. They didn't come with these fancy Panasonic. But check this out. Needs fan belts, but check it out. The power windows still work. Now they go down a lot faster than they go back up but they do still go back up slowly but surely. And really just listen to that engine. Hey, 
this thing's already gone at least 150,000 miles. Because in the old days, the speedometer only went to 99,999, then it go back to zero. So it's got either 150 or 250,000 on it. And yeah, when you put it in drive, it shakes a little bit. You get a little vibration here or there. You can feel the cab shaking somewhat. But really, it's a pan ultimate work truck. You don't care what happens to it. As previously mentioned, it comes pre-dinged from the trailer swinging along. It also came with junk already in the trunk, or the bed, I should say. And the wheels and rims are certainly worth the $2 price. And it's something no modern pickup truck has, the class of being an old Ford pickup truck that's still rolling down the road. You can't buy that. At least you can in any new truck. This was bought for $2. <laughs> And at least from this side, it didn't get crunched in when the trailer jackknifed when it backed up by itself, pre-bungee cord. It looks pretty good. So if you're looking for a good, cheap work truck, don't poo-poo an 80s Ford. It's an 86 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Nissan hard body. They sold a lot of hard bodies just a few years before this one. They called them Datsuns. These, they switched to call them hard bodies because they have double wall in the back and they're pretty solid built vehicles. And the proof of how solid this thing is, even though it's 36 years old, most of it's still original. This has got the V6 engine in it. The big bash against these hard bodies especially the old ones, was like a horsepower. The old ones had like 80 horsepower to the rear wheels. Okay, this one's got like about 180. So it's got a lot more power. And since it's got a camper on it, you really need it. But with this V6 engine, it can tow. He's hooking up a little coffee trailer. I'm gonna do a business in, probably close to 2,000 pounds with all the crap in it. And it won't have any problems towing. The interesting thing about this is, it looks like it has a carburetor. See, it's got the big old air filter that carburetors have, but voila, no. It has the old fashioned throttle body fuel injection. So even though this is old, 1986 and a half, it's fuel injected. You don't have to deal with all that crap of carburetors because the later model carburetors, right before they made this fuel injection system, had so much ridiculous electronics and anti-pollution equipment. When they got old, none of them would run that well. This. It's fuel injected. It still runs quite well. Similar to the Americans when they went to their throttle body. This is Nissan's take, but it still runs perfectly fine. And this one, as you can see, is a four by four. Most guys want to get a four by four, especially if they got a camper top, they're going to go hunting, camping. And yes, as you can see, this is a real four wheel drive vehicle. Here's the five speed standard tranny. Your Four wheel drive, two wheel high, four wheel high, neutral and four wheel low. While we're in here, you can see it's a pretty basic vehicle. It's got the little back seat. Now, <laughs> at least they had the common sense of putting it sideways because if they put it the other way, you couldn't have any legs. At least this way, there's room for somebody. You can stretch your legs out. Somebody sits on the other side here. You're gonna have feet in your face. No AC on this baby. Cold is just outside air. <laughs> The heater still works though. Now they call them hard bodies because basically they do have pretty hard bodies. They're pretty well made. This thing spent its entire life in Colorado before it moved to Tennessee and look. The frame is still solid. It's not rotting away. You saw the roads in Colorado for sure. Now he didn't have to replace the center shaft on the drive shaft because it had rotten over time. You expect that with the car, but I mean, you look at the frame and all the suspension parts, they're still in pretty good shape. And it's got a massive solid rear end because of course, most of them were just rear wheel drive cars. They made those for years, but this four wheel drive. So you're not gonna get stuck anywhere. And this is the advantage of old technology. The modern four wheel drives or all wheel drives they're computer controlled. They're insanity to fix when they break, and break they do. This has what? A gear shift. You can't make it any simpler than that. Two wheel high, four wheel high, neutral, and four wheel low. You don't have to worry about, it. gee, it won't engage. Well, you're grabbing it and engaging it yourself. No computers, no electronic motors. Simple stuff that could last forever if you take care of it. And yes, all technology means you gotta work more, cause it's got the lockers here. When you put it into four-wheel driving, when you use the front, you gotta lock them and unlock them. It's not that big of a deal. Realize the modern ones, again, it's all done by computers and servos. 
they break. They cost a fortune to fix. This is a very simple system. And then people say, in my new one, I just push a button and it goes into four wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, when it works. And I mean, hey, if you're going in four wheel drive and you're going into rough terrain, it's probably a good idea to get out, put the lockers on and look around and see what you're looking at. Don't just push a button and go flying into the wilderness. You might go flying off a cliff if you don't watch it. Now we'll go back under the hood. It's Nissan's V6 engine. They made millions of these things. As you can hear. Now try that. Now this one idles a tad too high because somebody fiddled with the screw on it and it's a throttle body, you're really not supposed to mess with that butt. You can see how smooth the engine is. It doesn't make much noise other than the fan whirring. Because yes, it's got a mechanical fan. There it is. Again, we're talking simple mechanical reliability. Instead of an electric fan, a mechanical one that runs off a fan belt. Yes, they get slightly worse gas mileage. Maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a mile a gallon at most. Hardly anything, really. It's just simplicity. The stuff can last a long time. It is just more long term than any electronic stuff. Electronics are always going to break. Physical stuff can last forever. And yeah, the front bumper could need a repainting, but interestingly enough, when you get to the back, the chrome still is in decent shape. Bring back the days of chrome. And since it's got a top, we'll look inside. There's an awful lot of room inside here. And like I said, they call them hard bodies because they have double wall construction in here. These things are solid as can be. Of course, these aren't the original rims, but they came with a vehicle. But the tires have kind of a funny story. When he bought it originally in 98, it had the famous exploding Firestone tires on it. So he got money in the settlement and he replaced them with much better tires. He has a Goodrich TAKO tires on it, and they lasted quite some time, but he doesn't drive it that much, so he wanted to get them rotated a while ago, and the guy said, I'm not rotating those tires, they're all dry rotted, which of course they were. Then he replaced them with these, but he did get rid of the exploding Firestones before they exploded while he was driving down the road. Well, the hood, take it for a spin. And sure, the dash ain't what it used to be, it's all cracked up, but it's a hard body. These six cylinders, they still work. No horrible rattling noises or piston knock. Still runs great. Nissan a hard body with a camper on it. High up in the air, four wheel drive. Sure, it rides kind of like a boat, but that's how these old pickup trucks ride. And the brakes, we had them on. They work perfectly good. Got a little bit of pull to the left, but I mean, hey, it's old. And sometimes when you turn the power steering, kind of sounds like a goose honking away, but it still works, it's still got power assist. There goes the goose honking away. Now it's by no means a drag race truck, but here we go our little drag strip. Let's see what it can do. One, two, three. Not exactly awe-inspiring, but it gets down the road. And with the four-wheel drive ability, you're not gonna get stuck in this thing. Well, the gears work perfectly fine. We'll put it in fifth gear. No problem getting in gear, smooth shifts. High old truck for cruising on the countryside. Or going into the countryside with the four wheel drive. Not that many of these left to buy, but hey, you never know. You might find an old barn find. And if you do, hey, go out and buy it. If you don't mind goose sound and power steering and creaks here and there. I do have to say though, if you look at one of these, get a V6 engine in them, they're a lot smoother. They got a lot more power if you do any kind of serious driving, especially off-road. So what I have to say about this old antique? Well, antiques often were better made and can last a really long time. Now this baby was made 14 years before Renault took over Nissan and pretty much single-handedly drove the company into a giant cliff over the edge and it's been falling ever since. And the Japanese controlled the company and made some really good vehicles like this. It's a shame they don't make them like that anymore, but they used to make really good vehicles that could run a really long time. And they made an awful lot of them. So like I say, you find one of these in a barn and it runs, hey, snap it up. It'll probably outlast the new crap that they're making. 
Check this out. The guy paid seven grand for it a couple of years ago. The only thing he's done to it is put a fuel pump and a power steering pump on it. And even though, as you can see, it's got 183,000 miles on it, listen to this. Starts right up, sounds like a dream. No misfires. Smooth engine, not shaking. Now the owner admits it burns oil. If he changes the oil after 5,000 miles, in between he has to add about half a quart of oil. No biggie. I've seen new ones that in that period of time would go through five or six quarts of oil and GM would say, oh well that's normal on these engines. Seriously, they don't make them like they used to. The modern ones, I see the transmissions going out early. This one's still got the original transmission. It's just like a dream. Got a full size bed, and he's going to be putting these rally wheels on later. And the advantage of these older ones, like this 97, is you can do a lot of modifications yourself. You don't need to have a bunch of computers to modify stuff. You can still play around with these things. And being a 1500, there are parts all over the place. You can trade for them, you can buy them on eBay. There's all kinds of parts available for these things relatively cheaply, so you can play to your heart's content without spending a small fortune brand new 2021 Silverado. They start for about $34,900. Paid seven for this two years ago and it's still running fine. Even if the engine and transmission went out and he had to spend a few thousands fixing them, it's worth it. These things are solid. If they don't rust out, they can last forever. And let's check the undercarriage out. Here we have the frame. Solid as can be. You're always gonna see superficial rust. That means nothing. This frame is solid as can be. You can see it's a real truck. It's got a solid frame, and then the bed is bolted onto the frame. This is not some unibody pile of junk. And another reason these are great, they got strong differentials in the back to drive the rear wheels. This is a rear wheel drive pickup truck. The differential in this truck was made in the United States. And if you know anything about late model Silverados, their rear ends go out all the time. And it took this genius and Order to figure out why, where he studied the rear ends and found out that they were made in Mexico and they were not building them correctly. So the way they were building them, they were not tightening them up tight enough. The internal bearings would have the equivalent slack of a rear end that had 80 or 90,000 miles. This is fresh out of the factory. And then I had customers have 50, 60,000 miles on their new Silverados. The rear ends went out, started howling because they were not made correctly in Mexico. This baby was made in the United States. It's still working fine. Now look fine it's solid let's check the electronics out because that never lies so I'll hook the old scan tool up turn it on and here we go it's an old car so it's going to take a while to get all this data out the new ones are a lot faster but it still gets a lot of information now in this case there's three codes so let's check them out the catalyst efficiency is low bank one and bank two and there's a little bit of a misfire which doesn't surprise me at all because has the exhaust been modified as you can hear and you can hear a little bit of pops here and there. When you modify the exhaust and have it free flow like that, it's often going to mess with the catalytic converter data. And every once in a while, you're going to get a pop. Well, that pop is a misfire. What's well, a good thing this thing is in Tennessee. You don't really have to worry about all the pollution control stuff because they don't check for it anymore. Unless you live around Nashville. Now we're going to look at the live data. And we want to look at the computer system. Well, we got all kinds of information to look at. We'll start looking through it. Your fuel ratio is 14.7 to 1. This has 183,000 miles on it you know what perfect air fuel ratio is 14.7 to 1 so it's still running perfectly <laughs> You can see the injector average on bank two is three millisecond and on bank one it's three millisecond. That means that the engine's perfectly balanced. If one was off from the other, there's a problem. The engine would roll because one side would be firing different than the other, but these are exactly the same, which is what you want. Now as we look at the misfire current, you can see there's okay, they just went to two count. The others are all zero. So the number four cylinders having a very minor misfire. Like I say, that's generally because the exhaust system, you're gonna get a little pop in here and there. You see when we rub it up, the count goes back to zero. That proves my point. When you're going fast, it doesn't care. But at an idle, with the exhaust being taken off like this and loud, it's got a little bit of a ding. But when you rub it up, it doesn't misfire. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Transmission dead. Here's the two to three shift. What do we have here? Two to three shift error, 0.44 seconds. That isn't much. With this kind of mileage, so what if it takes a little bit less than half of a second for it to shift from second to third gear? We're not in that big of a hurry, are we? Three to four shift time is instantaneous. 
it's zero, which doesn't surprise me at all. I often see these in these. Three to four, there's less power going. First to second and second to third is when guys are really gunning it to take off. So those are the gears that will wear more than the higher gears, and this just proves the three to four shift. It doesn't take any time at all to shift because that's the one that has less wear. But all in all, hey, it runs pretty good. We'll take it for a road test. Here we go around the neighborhood. You're up nice and high. Still rides pretty good. And here we go. You can feel it. We're shifting. Pretty smooth shift if you ask me. I'm not whining about it. The computer might say it's off point four four of a second, but feels pretty good to me. Now we're getting out on the country road here. See what this old truck can do. Still has got good acceleration. Let's listen to the tranny. I don't call that a rough shift at all myself. She's pretty smooth to me. So now you know the truth about why these old Silverados are a heck of a lot better than the ones they've been building for the last eight or 10 years. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.